Our fourth element of art that we're going to take a look at is space. And this one is packed with several concepts that are important for us to understand. First of all, our definition of space is simply going to be the area within or around something. So if I draw a shape on the board, for instance, and I'll make it an irregular, sort of an organic shape, um, there's space within the shape, and then there's space around the shape. It's very flat, it's very two-dimensional. An example of that might be that portrait that we looked at earlier of Picasso. There's the figure, his head and shoulders. Um, there's the area within that figure, and then there's the area or space with uh, outside that, that area, the background, so to speak. So when we speak of space, we can be referring to two-dimensional space or three-dimensional space. I should also say that uh, typically the object that is sort of the emphasis of the scene or picture, that's oftentimes considered the positive space, and the area around it would be the negative space. For instance, uh, on the board, the positive space would be this shape that I've created, and the negative space would be the space around the shape. We want to be aware of both of those in our art. When it comes to space, we can also think of it in terms of three dimensions. And we can represent three dimensions on a flat surface in several ways. One of the things that we want to keep in mind when we create a picture, if we're trying to create a sense of, of space, of depth in our picture, is we'll make sure that we have distinct uh, levels or areas of depth. The three that we will refer to frequently would be the foreground, the middle ground, and the background. So the foreground would be anything that is right before you, right before the viewer's eyes. The middle ground would be anything that's positioned in the middle. And of course the background would be those objects, that space, that's farthest away. Um, an example of that might be just this camera view of me. Right now it's rather flat. There's just me and the wall behind me. There's not really uh, three levels of depth. Now if I stick my hand out and have it come toward you, that starts to look a little more three-dimensional. You could say my hand is in the foreground my head and body in the middle ground, and you could say that the wall behind me is the background. So how we compose or arrange the things in our picture well, has a profound effect on how we perceive uh, space in that picture. So here's a few hints for arranging your picture to create the illusion of depth, if that's what you're going for. First of all, there's placement. If I have a canvas or a sheet of paper, hopefully this shows up all right on the camera, the higher up I place a thing, the further away it'll appear to be. Um, maybe you've experienced that. The higher up something is uh, in a photograph, for instance, typically the farther away it is. Also with respect to overlap, uh, to uh, placement, is overlapping. So if I have these same two shapes, the square and the circle, if I do this and have it look like the circle overlaps the square, that will create a sense of depth or three-dimensional space. Another trick that I can use is diminishing size. If I reduce the size, of the square, and I'll keep the overlap. That'll also sell the illusion that the circle in this case is closer than the, than the square. We can use converging lines. That would mean uh, things that appear to be like edges or sides of things that appear to be going away into the distance toward a vanishing point. So. Converging lines can be used to express space. 
Um, obviously, if I have diminishing details, that'll express space, um, three-dimensional space. The closer I am to something, the more you can see the details. The further away I am from that thing, the less the details will be clear. Value and color intensity can be used to express space. The brighter the color, the more vibrant the color or the value. Um, they'll oftentimes have a tendency to jump out on a uh, picture uh, visually. And then also uh, the last effect for or trick for creating space is using shadows and highlights. If I can uh, emphasize a highlight on an object and have it cast a shadow, um, it'll look as if this object is existing in three-dimensional space and the light is hitting it um, from different angles perhaps. So let's take a look at a work of art that I think expresses space really well. Um, this by Canaletto, Piazza San Marco. You can see uh, converging lines. This is a very strong linear perspective. Uh, the lines, the edges of things are appearing to run into the distance. Obviously there's more details in the things that are closer to us. Things that are smaller, uh, further away are smaller, so he uses diminishing size. Uh, so there's many tricks um, at work in this uh, particular painting to make it look like this is a three-dimensional space that you could walk down into the plaza and into the distance towards the harbor. So that's our element of space.